A project brings benefits and change, but that's not all. Projects bring risks. Whenever you begin a project, FMEA determines the associated risks. FMEA, or Failure Modes and Effects Analysis, is the tool to do that. By combining severity, probability, and the ability to detect, this process generates one number for comparison. This allows you to put your focus on the most costly failure risks. Let's look at what it does in a little more detail. FMEA helps you predict failure modes before you start any improvement effort. It addresses failure risk in a holistic manner. For any process you are building or even already built, FMEA and a little brainstorming will help you define all failure effects, causes, and how they are controlled. This is something you should understand for any process. At the end of the FMEA effort, you will have a risk mitigation strategy based on the impact of the greatest potential failure. Next, we will go over the steps and then I will follow that with an example. First, identify the process. Next, brainstorm all the different failure risks. Then for each identified failure risk, you assign an impact on the process should that failure occur. Following that, for every identified risk, you list the potential causes of that failure, followed by the perceived probability of the occurrence of that failure. Then you list what you have in place to control the effects of the failure. The next step is to define an ability to detect the failure should that failure occur. Lastly, the failure severity rating is multiplied with the occurrence probability and then the detection ability to come up with a risk priority number. This last number is used to compare against each identified failure risk. The risk priority number gives you a way to compare the impact of any of the identified failure scenarios. This gives you guidance on where to direct the mitigation effort. This will become clearer with an example. This example involves either the build, modification, or just normal operations of a surgery. One of the success criteria of any surgery is the effort that goes on before the surgery starts, and that is what this example covers, pre-surgery operations. The first step is to brainstorm failure risks. I have selected three here. The first involves just-in-time supply system. The second risk are contaminated surgery tools. And lastly is the patient does not arrive for their surgery. All of these represent risks to a surgery. Each of these failure risks has a defined impact to surgery. If supplies aren't available, the surgery will be delayed just as if the tools were contaminated. Both of these failure modes would cause a delay in the surgery. The patient not arriving would result in a surgery cancellation. Now that the impacts have been identified, a rating is attached to each impact of failure. The numbers I put in here are just an example. The next step is to identify the causes of failure. This example is not meant to be an extensive list. As an example, just-in-time supplies not arriving could be a result of poor communication. Contaminated tools could be caused by poor inspection and an air leakage in the packaging or mishandling of those tools. Lastly, the case where the patient doesn't arrive could be caused by poor patient planning or scheduling. The next step involves determining the probability of the failure occurring and assigning a value within 1 to 10. Failure risk is mitigated by controls. That's what we review next. Just-in-time supplies could be mitigated by having a day's worth of supplies on site and or confirmation of delivery. A control for contaminated tools could be visual inspection. Patients not arriving could be mitigated by using text to verify their arrival. The next step is to determine your ability to detect a failure. It is very easy to detect that supplies don't arrive and that the patient doesn't arrive. It may be much harder to detect contaminated tools. The entered numbers are meant to represent that. The risk priority number is the result of the whole effort. The value of this number is meant to guide you on how to focus your improvement efforts. This example demonstrates that by far the greatest risk is from contaminated tools. This directs the first effort to improve. Companies' ability to move forward is based on their ability to perform projects. Projects start because of the defined benefit. Benefit must be tempered with risk. This process helps you identify risks and ways to control those risks. No project should be started without testing the impact of failure in the risk areas. This robust and well-used methodology requires a process and brainstorming. It takes a little time and is relatively simple with a large benefit attached. At the end of this process, you will have identified failure risks, failure impacts, failure causes, current available mitigation controls, and a priority for addressing the risks. I am Jim Fitzgerald, a Lean Six Sigma Master Black Belt, expert on building a production system like Toyota, and an innovation master. Don't let your process building efforts fail because you have not planned for failure risks. This last slide shows you how you can build your own production system like Toyota.